Well, looks like we're live. Hello, my friends. Hello, and it's going to be a slow roll in the house because we can't really give a heads up anymore. Yeah, yeah, as we've said before, and I found uh, doing a little research where other people had the same thing happen to them where they can't really plug a certain time in to go live. So what we end up is just winging it, guys. Mm -hmm. And we have with us Dr. Joe Mara, who is a good friend of ours and we've had on in the past. Hey guys, how's it going? So we see we have Renee and we have Rick Moore, Christine's in the house. Good to see you guys. We're going to have some interesting discussions on ETs and different ET races. Disclosure, which is ongoing and evident to so many people right now. We, so many of us are just seeing things every single night. So uh, Dr. Joe and his lovely wife and beautiful little baby boy went camping with us a little while ago uh this shows we're gonna get some buffering well of course because look at the subject anyway last time we went camping together we were just looking up at the night sky and we were seeing all sorts of ships and craft going by yeah that was pretty amazing um that was what a, a, a few weeks ago yeah i think it was maybe about three weeks ago now wow Time, time, time flies. Yeah, time's just been flying right by. And so some of the things we witnessed at that time were uh, still spectacular to me. Even though I've been doing this for so long, it's still just uh, so amazing. And whenever you have these discussions, uh, it's uh, even more amazing how many people have not had the experience. Or some of which that have had the experience is afraid to come out because of all the ridicule that still exists to this day. Yeah, I, I think there's less and less fear of ridicule now because um, it's just it's getting to be more common practice for people to see things. And we're seeing stuff that's probably a lot of it is probably ours, secret space program, Space Force type stuff. But there's a lot of stuff out there, too, uh, that's definitely E.T. and I.T., um, or I should say interdimensional uh as well we're seeing things that i think sometimes they're merkabas light bodies and sometimes they're physical ships as well so this is interstellar wellness center and this is a little bit about dr joe and uh he is another reiki master teacher i believe right yeah so i'm a hypnotherapist and uh, i like to use the term energy healer i'm uh attuned in uh reiki uh, Sakam, Sakam, Moon Aiki, but generally speaking, after you start to practice and do this, whenever you're calling upon the highest sources of creation to come in, I don't like to limit the energies that come in by simply saying one modality such as Reiki. Not that there's anything wrong with any of the individual modalities, if that's your specialty, but once you start to do it, you just allow the universe to come through you as a channel and allow the information or the energy, whatever type of healing. And it's not always a physical healing. Sometimes it's emotional and mental healing. There's many different types of uh, healings uh, that people get, in, including spiritual. And I, I totally agree with your view on it. Um, in fact, I really think that as time goes on, we're going to start getting away from labels more. I think that's part of um, the changes that are coming. Uh, not that it's not a good thing to get a background in Reiki, pranic healing, medical qigong, whatever it is, um, and then develop your own system. I think these times are going to be about us being more creative and just coming up and letting things flow in a way that feels good. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times what we look at it is, is like it's a permission slip to our ego that we can actually... Uh, are allowed to go out and do this. We have this official title where we're a Reiki master or uh, an Egyptian uh, Sakem Sakem healer or whatever it is. And it, it allows you, your ego mind, to be like, okay, well, I've learned from another master. I'm attuned. The energies are there. But again, as you continue to practice and some of these energies come through, you realize that um, they're a basis, they're a stepping stone to some other things that are out there that you may not be aware of. Exactly. And what's your feelings on this, Cindy? Well, I, I do feel like more and more it's um, kind of an individual thing where, well, for me personally, since I've been doing energy healing, energy work, I've kind of made my own way. Like a lot of people will 
look at different religions and they'll kind of pick from that religion what feels good to them. So I've reviewed a whole lot of different healing modalities and kind of scooped them all together and use the ones that feel best for me. And I do think that not putting it in a box does make one a little stronger. I mean, and that's just my opinion. Yep. And so we have two, uh, two docs in the house. We have Karma Doc also in the chat room. And, you know, it's, it's wonderful to be with people that have gone through traditional schooling and yet are open-minded and, and yet experiencing and practicing alternative as well as traditional. Um, because, you know, in these times, we're going to start to blend things more and more. And, and already that's going on, the blending of alternative, quote-unquote alternative, which is really... That's the more ancient path when you get down to it. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's fun. Oh, and again, as uh, Cindy said, the, the labeling uh, that we have uh, these days, um, for sake of conversation, obviously we have to use uh, verbiage or uh, vocabulary words that we use for um, mm, to help communicate uh, these types of things with individual people. And, uh, you know, everybody has their own different reference point. And so... Uh, for instance, I walked in uh, to uh, a psychic one time, and I had a migraine. And of course, I'm my scientific self. You know, I, you know, all all of my degrees are in uh, science, so I'm the scientist, and I don't want to give anything up, and just in case they're a charlatan or something. So I walk in the door, straight faced, and you know, good posture. And as soon as I walked through the door, the the psychic looked at me. She goes, "Oh my gosh, you must have a major migraine." And I looked at her. I said, "How the heck did you know that?" And to hers, she was born with the gift of uh, being a psychic, if you will. She saw auras. And to her, uh, and I believe the color to her was yellow. And, and so this isn't to take away from anybody else that, that sees a different color. In fact, it's, it's to help explain how different people see things differently. Um, so if you were to learn to be a psychic, we all have these innate abilities, but if you're an adult and later on in life you learn how to do this and you're learning from someone who their reference point happens to be red and that's what you learn then to you that specific color means that to you and it's the same with numerology some people will go by a particular um, guru that has uh, numbers and uh, and and it's an individual understanding and when you see it this is what it means to you individually and I mean we were separated enough in, in this lifetime. And so it's funny because when different modalities come out or, or people on different parts of the planet have similar, um, uh, God, uh, such as, I, I guess what I could say is like the, the numerology thing. Like say you're, you're looking at it from Eastern and then one from Western. And there's a similar, similarity there because it's, you're talking about numbers. And just because the number sevens don't mean the same in the east and west don't make that one incorrect in that particular moment of now when that person that sees it what it means to them is how they convey it to you and so it sounds a little bit confusing and you would think that there was one truth and you would just get there and you'd be like okay well sevens mean this and that's it but i got to tell you that each individual person has their own reference point and and i've witnessed this over and over and over through my exploration of this thing called life Exactly. You know, and, you know, tr if you take traditionally like the archangels, Raphael associated with the east, Gabriel to the west, and uh, Mikhail to the south, and Uriel to the north, but in some traditions it's not the case. Sometimes, in some traditions they're actually shifting into different places. Um, and I've, I've seen it also in certain traditions, depending on what coast you were on, uh, it could be different as well. So, you know, everything is really a personal experience. That's what we've been talking about so much lately, too. Uh, w no matter what tradition you're coming out of, whether you're coming out of the more esoteric Western traditions or you're looking into the Eastern traditions that we've talked about, ultimately, it keeps boiling down to the same thing, that we are all individuated aspects of source. We are all unique creations, and yet, we are creations of source, but we are also source in dwelling. And that's so we could each have a unique experience, a unique frame of, well, point of view. And, and that's okay because, you know, it doesn't have to be a one-size-fits-all world. And unfortunately, so often we've been pushed into these 
labels and these different camps. And as we're going to start talking too about different ET races, you know, they're not all the same as well. And, and we've, well, I've been trying to get across um, that we should expand our vocabulary when we're talking about these different beings, because so often from a fundamentalist standpoint, it's either it's either angels, demons, or God, or humans, and there's nothing else. There's more than one type of birds in the ocean, uh, the bird in the air, fish in the ocean, and, and more than one type of creature crawling on the earth. So there's all of these different labels we could give, but ultimately each one is unique. And I think also we've had a tendency to view things as black and white too much when it's really just millions of different shades of gray when you get down to it. Mm -hmm. That's true. We don't want to limit ourselves. And I think we're coming to an age where we're learning that, that labels are just kind of like stepping into a box. And I'm trying to think, you know, when does it matter? When should you label? When should you separate things? And when should you like isolate things? And I think one of the things like when you're working in the ether, say you're doing a ritual or something and you're working in, like in an al alchemy way, you know, sometimes it matters like what step you do first, second, third, and fourth to get X result. But besides that, everything else seems so like it can be very melded together these days. Yeah, I think we're going to go to a place where individuality is going to be something that's going to be not only fully embraced, but encouraged as we move out of this Kali Yuga and into uh, a new, more golden age. And so, you know, just reading a little bit from uh, Dr. Joe's website, uh, Dr. Mara feels that we have been dumbed down by the powers that be for control, power, money, and other various reasons. So we are totally in agreement there. And he feels that we are all spiritual beings living a human experience and that we're also multidimensional beings that can manifest whatever we desire through intent and focused thought. We have tremendous power inside. We must first go within, rid ourselves of negative karma and learned beliefs that have been taught to us for many generations. And th so much of those beliefs are learned, limited beliefs. And they've been given to us in order to keep us in a limited frame of mind, a limited fr point of view, to make us feel like we need more than just ourselves and, and really being ourselves. And so that leads to a lot of internal conflict, which can eventually lead to dis-ease. And really, like with the whole Western system, it, one of the things that isn't really done in the East is diagnosing. And so often people will go into their their doctor and have absolute trust in them and if their doctor says well sorry you got three months they're probably going to manifest that if they believe in him so it's it's a matter of recognizing you know the holistic aspects of the being and also recognizing that we are co-creators and so each one of us is creating reality from our own aspect and our own viewpoint and we have to learn to say hey that's okay that's a good thing you know we don't need to have 7.7 .7 billion uh, sheep that all are being herded in the same direction, so to speak. So Dr. Joe does have a YouTube channel. He's gotten busy with other things, so he hasn't uploaded a lot to it. But he did get to witness the Phoenix Lights going back in 2009. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so... Um my friend Terry uh, Ippoletti and myself, uh, we were traveling all over the place at this time in our uh, lifetime, and we were trying to figure out what the heck is going on in the world. We, were, we, were, we heard about the Phoenix Lights, and we were uh, uh, speaking with um, Cynthia Crawford, uh, who lived in uh, Phoenix. Um, in fact, she lived uh, right behind her house was Apache Junction, uh, Superstition Mountain, I, I believe it was called. And so... Uh, Terry was just walking towards the bathroom and she looked out the front bay window towards Phoenix and she says there they are and I thought what's the chances we came out here to capture the Phoenix lights um, that Lynn Kitai she's a medical doctor captured years and years before and there they were I grabbed my camcorder I ran out and I just started to film and uh, yeah it was pretty amazing I mean they were so big compared to the, the, the lights in the horizon there of, over Phoenix. And then there was this little helicopter or a plane that was flying around these, and it gave you a reference point of how big these things really were. It, it was just an amazing 
uh, experience that I that is just one of so many. But it, it was it was it was awesome that I captured it on uh, camcorder. So did you feel that these things were physical and solid, or did you feel th- that they were more energetic? Yeah, I felt like they were more like a the, the best way I could describe it is more of a plasma, and because I have no other words to describe it, it was a light. And um, because we use these five senses, right, um, the best way that I could describe it is a, a plasma ball that was uh, shifting in colors, and then it would all of a sudden phase in and then phase out. And it was several minutes, and I think I've captured about a minute and 42 seconds or something like that. And, um, yeah, if you go to my uh, YouTube page, you could actually go and you can listen to the, the audio and it's funny how I start the conversation. I, I run out there, and in my conscious awareness, I'm like, okay, if anybody ever wants to review this footage, okay, I'm at her house. I just ran off the porch. So there's a tree right here so they could actually kind of gauge how far uh, I was from Phoenix and those types of things. But I was shaking because I was not because I was scared, because it was so exciting that I'm capturing these things. And... Uh, yeah, it, it was just it, it was just one of those amazing times in life that you actually got the capture on uh, camcorder. But again, I was at the very beginning. I say, oh well, here's these flares that we're probably going to be told they are, which I didn't believe they were right off the bat. I'm like, oh my God, there there are these. They they're not from this planet. They're from another dimension or somewhere other than here. Is what the feeling I got. But I knew the storyline was going to be, oh, yeah, the military, there they are with their flares again. But how could they phase in and out for several minutes? You know, they didn't fall at all. It didn't look like uh, flares at all. And, you know, you get the swamp gas and all the other crazy excuses. But, yeah, it was, it was, it was an amazing, yeah, experience. Yeah, that's, that's definitely one of the more famous uh, sightings that has been talked about for a long time now. And now we have so many things like this happening on really a daily basis, pretty much every day. It's just you guys. You guys are just sharing your experiences out there and the fact that you're seeing things up in the sky that you can't explain, but you know they're not normal, you know they're not typical, and you know they're perhaps not of this 3D reality as well. Sassy. Yeah, you know, there's just so much going on, and it it is becoming more and more of a normal thing to look up in the sky and see things. Like here at nighttime, if we look up, you know, we see, like, we'll think it's a star in in its place, and then all of a sudden it'll move. (laughs) It'll just start moving, and that's no star, and this happens over and over and over, and I'm also wondering if they're not doing some kind of a controlled disclosure lately like there is some information come out on venus um that kind of alludes to there might be some uh activity there that we weren't aware of before but i think that they already know these things they have for a very long time so yeah i mean we're getting to that place and time where it's just going to be a common space and what they need to do now, I think, is it's time to really start seriously introducing some different entities that might be to start kind of getting the public ready a little bit. I, I think it's time. Without a doubt. Yeah. And sorry, there's so much buffering, guys. Everything is running very, very smooth until we start to go live. And then obviously there's a lot of interference at times going on. And so... You were talking about Cynthia. Yeah, so um, Cynthia was, uh, I guess she was considered an ambassador, uh, an ET ambassador to the Earth, and so um, she was quite psychic, and um, uh, I guess you could read her story online. I don't want to really talk too much about it in case I say something wrong, Um, but uh, I think that she was involved in military practices, like I think her father was in it, and but... I know there was a twin sister. There was all all kind of stuff. And again, this is years ago. I mean, this was back in uh, 2009 that I filmed this. And so I'm going on recollection here. Um, she had uh, said that she was on these various ships, and these are the beings that she met. So she sculpted them, 
and that she imbued the energy of these beings in each one of these. And people were buying these all over. In fact, I bought a Syrian uh, back then. And it was ma amazing the energy that came from this particular sculpture that, uh, sculpture that I uh, purchased and um, the various people I lent it out to. And so, again, this isn't for everybody, but you know what? If you're open-minded enough to uh, take a look at it, uh, it may be something that, that will help catapult you into you know, the next level, if you will of what you're uh, exploring. And I think she's passed on since. Uh, I believe in, you know, again, I'm going by memory. I, I believe she passed, uh, passed away. So I don't even know that you can get her um, uh, sculptures anymore. Yeah, very interesting sculptures for sure. And uh, I know there's quite a delay, I guess, coming through right now. So the photos are just starting to come up of some of her work. But there's many ET contactees on the planet, and s some people are contacted by just one group, others by multiple groups. And obviously, uh, we've talked a lot about star seeds, and then perhaps have not explained it, you know, t for people that are new to this whole idea. And so, you know, the thought is that there are some people that are simply here on the planet from other places, uh, in order to assist with ascension. That's their whole purpose here. Uh, they're just coming in to, to help with the transition period because obviously it's it's going to be quite a roller coaster ride as we are shaking off the shackles of a system uh, that does not have our best interests in mind. It doesn't have the best interest of you know the plants, the animals, the fish, the birds, the whole planet itself. It's been a system that just kind of uses and abuses and takes at will. Uh, acting more like a virus than in a symbiotic relationship with the life forms on Earth. Interesting that when we see of uh, so many traditions around the world, they talk about these um, magnificent, bright and shining beings who have been here in the past when we've had other cataclysms and helped us put the pieces back together. Um, why don't they in interfere and just kick the bad guys out? Well, free will is one of the things that we get and it's also part of our learning and growing experience oh gosh it's so important for our learning and growing and it would almost be like robbery if they were to take our free will because one of the reasons we come here is to learn and to grow and i've heard earth is one of the best places where you can really expand and maybe move through many many different traumas so it's very important to come here learn what you came to learn be able to grow and then came that and, and and claim that for yourself you know it's like if you go to school and and take a test it's not really a test if you're given all the answers so i kind of look at it like that exactly so it, it's our time to grow and our time to step uh into our big boy shoes in so many ways yeah you know um the way I look at it is, um, in an, it, it's difficult for me to look at things uh, not in energy. Um, I mean, everything is energy. Uh, everything just vibrates at a, a different uh, frequency. And so once you start to look at, look at life and everything in the eyes of energy, then you start to look at vibration and how things vibrate. And, you know, it, it helps you understand the bigger picture with the ETs that how they come in and out of other dimensions what we and again we we talk with these words and we're using these things that are uh, um, to help us understand and to help us communicate with one another but they're really in a linear way it's it's really difficult they don't have words for some of the things that we try to to explain um, but as far as the the ETs that are coming in um, you know Forever in a day, we've had the the bad boys here on the planet, inside the planet, and you know what I've gotten over the years. And, and this is if you go back and if the people that know me and have followed me over the years, they already know this. So this is for the new people. There is a friend of mine, Terry Apoletti, who she uh, did some really deep channeling, and for years we did this. And the information I got from the, the ETs that were coming through were that if they physically came here, because everybody says, why don't they just come here and get it over with? If they did that, 
the world would be in such fear that it, and fear, there's fear and there's love in this polarity that we live in, hot, cold, good, bad, up, down. We, we have fear and we have love. And if the ETs, the positive ones, would come down here, it because of all the movies and just because of that inner fear, because of not knowing that we're for sure, that we're um, not alone in the, the universe, once that is presented to the pop population, it's one of those things where it would set us down a vibration and w they would almost have to start over. And so humanity is raising up in this, what many are calling the ascension process. And the vibrations that are coming through from the central sun to our sun to the planet, they have to be neck down vibrationally so that our physicality can handle it. And it because if it all came at one time, that physicalness that we call our human body and our DNA would be obliterated. And that's, that's my best way that I can explain it. Uh, but the information that I got, again, was that because everybody wants to know, how come they just don't come down here and just prove it, and then everybody can, you know, sing come by and, you know, live happily ever after. And it's about vibration. And so you also have to realize that we're co-creators of this thing called life. And the more people that think, think one thing at one time, it's your general reality. And so that's, the bad guys know this. And so as they own the media, and on every station they're saying, there's a comet coming, it's going to destroy us. Everybody that's watching that, the more people that think that, it's your general reality. It becomes that fear-based uh, thought process. And then, guess what? We're co-creators. That's what we create. And so it's really, really important to raise your vibration as high as you possibly can. And I've been sp speaking this for over a decade <laughs> on, on radio shows and my own radio show, uh, Universal Talk, that the information that I got from these uh, channeled um, uh, sessions from these higher dimensional beings are raise your vibration as high as you possibly can until the very end. And so to me, they're, I'm thinking, oh, the end, does that mean that there is an end to all this? And so I think it's a shifting. It's not really an ending. It's just a shifting from where we've been. And it's a subtle thing that we're doing little by little by little by little. And then all of a sudden, I think there's a, um, a point in time where we truly just shift. And some people, I think, call it the event. But again, I'm speaking in words, and I'm trying to depict a, a, an understanding that I have in the best way that I can, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, so many people come out of uh, the Christian tradition and, and think about the rapture. And, and then, of course, we also have ascension and perhaps two different things at the same time. Some people maybe will be taken up, you know, literally taken up into ships and off planet. As we know, you know, that's what the plan is of so many of the elite. And, you know, when it's time for them to go, they're either going down into their bunkers or they're going to blast off in these secret space program ships. You know, that's their plan. But then also we've gotten from ETs that there will be some people that are actually literally picked up and taken on ET ships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what Joe was saying about raise the vibration. I've channeled Pleiadians before, and they cannot stress that enough about how important it is to raise our vibration um there they tell me that this can change timelines where things are going to happen that's inevitable but they don't have to be as bad and if your vibration is higher where you're at you can actually make a difference um in your immediate surroundings so things might not turn out quite as bad and they they really they tell me this over and over and over and they want me to tell you guys that how important it is and there's many different ways to do that um and it, it's just it's really important really important yeah as as both cindy and joe have gotten that same message raise your vibrations yeah. raise your vibrations so what what are they doing they're trying to get us to lower them and that's why we have all the civil conflict going on all the distraction you know as we talked about the debate you know, I, how many positive words were there in that debate? I mean, I think it was completely negative. It was just focusing all on the negative and lashing out at each other. And, you know, that's what they want us to do is to lash out at each other, to take sides. You know, we have Armenia and Azerbaijan facing each other. And, you know, their hope is that it's going to pull in, well, it may have already pulled in Turkey by the sounds of it, pull in Russia, pull in Greece, then pull in NATO, and then, 
you know, before you know it, we're looking at WW3, and, and that will lower vibrations. That will make things worse when we have those energies out there. I've talked to you guys before that one of the things in my studies I started to notice was a correlation between really bad earth changes and massive earthquakes, things like that, at times when we have a lot more war and conflict. So when we are sowing the seeds and falling into their trap of sowing the seeds uh, of negativity, it will manifest in more ways than one. So we have to be aware of that and, you know, not take that side, not get out there and, you know, grab whatever it is, a brick or whatever you know, weapon it is, and create uh, another bad act that is just going to add to the chaos add to the negativity and add to the downward cycle, we have to take a step back and step out. Again, you know, to replace the system, we'll have to put a new system into effect. You can't put a Band-Aid on this system. It's way too corrupt. It's, it's past that point. So we need to come together and really create alternatives on a smaller scale at first as this consciousness revolution is growing uh, around the globe. It's just at the moment... In so many ways, it's being a little bit misdirected. Yeah, so um, one of the other things that I think it's important to say while we're on this thread is that not only should you raise your vibration, um, but you have to take action. So people that are just sitting idle, waiting for the change to happen, uh, you know, I've, I've lived this, and, and I honestly thought at one point in, in my exploration that I could just sit there and I could just raise my vibration and let the world go all around, all around me and just let, let, it, let it happen. But what I've realized over time is that, yes, it's, it's really important to raise your vibration, but it's also really important because we're physical beings to put action and, and intent into the change. And so it's not enough to sit there and have good, positive thoughts. If that's all you can do, then do that. But sh there's, there's got to be some kind of act of kindness that each individual person that's still alive on the planet can do to assist in the collective consciousness and raising in the vibration, in the shift of the ages that we're going to go through. And so a lot of people wonder, like, well, uh, is it going to be doom or gloom or is it going to be, you know, all wonderful? I think that there's going to be a combination depending where you're vibrating at. Because, and what I learned about vibration is wherever you are on the planet, if the particular spot on the planet is a low vibrational, you feel it. You experience things that are at a lower vibration. And when you, say, get on a plane and you go somewhere like, you know, Phoenix or Laughlin. Um, boy, my psychic abilities, if you want to call them that, just kicked up. And I was, you know, I, I was like reading people's minds. It was, it was ridiculous. I was answering their, or I was finishing their sentences and I knew what they were going to say before they said it. And so I know that where you are on the planet makes a big difference. Like if you're in a vortex area and you're at a higher vibrational place, you actually vibrate it, you tune into that vibration. And so that also explains when you see UFOs, like when I went up to the East Eddy Ranch, uh, James Gillilands, um, everybody shifted at a higher vibration and collectively we were seeing the same things at the same time because our vibrations were higher and we were all tuned into one another. So different people on the planet that are vibrating at a different frequency are going to experience this shift differently. There are going to be some people that are at a lower vibration. It's going to be what they say, a living hell. That's what they're going to experience. And so the people that have been controlling us and, and all the things that they've ever done, that, that law of attraction, if you will, that whatever you're putting out is coming back to yourself, well, those are the people that are going to experience the worst of this. Then there's going to be people that are going to experience anything in between. So for some people, I really believe that they will just simply shift. If they're in a high enough vibration, they just shift and they kind of skirt the waves. They're at the top of it. They're not going up and down and up and down. And then there's other people at the very low that are experiencing the worst things imaginable. And so when we're telling you to raise your vibration, it's for the purpose of having a better experience, a more positive experience. And there will be pockets because of the people that are there in certain areas that will do very, very well. 
and start to develop the new uh, civilization which is to come as well. So people have felt the urge to move, to get up, to go to different spots uh, because you can no longer tolerate where you're at and you're being called somewhere else because there's higher powers also guiding you somewhere else to some of these sacred sites that people might not even realize are sacred. Um, but have been sacred sites, vortex spots. You know, when you go to Sedona, you feel the energy. When you're at Shasta, you feel that energy. Um, when we're in, uh, went by the, the monuments in New Mexico, um, boy, you can feel the energy there as well. There's all these different spots that are, are vortex spots and kind of safe zones as well. Mm-hmm. There are. There's many. I don't know if anyone's ever been to the mystery place in California or the mystery spot in California, but that's um, really strange when you go there and you're standing on level ground and you feel like you're tipped and they'll show you like this pool ball where it rolls actually uphill. And (laughs) it's really crazy. And it's so interesting how our Mother Earth can have these places Um, on her that are completely unexplainable as far as our education goes I'm sure there is a a good explanation for it they just don't like to tell us these things so yeah any if you get quiet with your mind and you meditate and do your very very best and if you're feeling pulled to a certain area then that's something maybe you should explore and thank you Robert Johnson for your support we appreciate it Uh, we couldn't do it without you guys and uh, Mary Kingsley's just talking about how she was in Trafalgar Square back in 67 protesting. And the police had no weapons and they were talking with them and there was good vibes exchanged. Yeah, things have changed uh, without a doubt. You know, so much of the 60s was the beginning seeds of change. And perhaps, it, you know, the ball wasn't carried far enough in the right direction. Uh, but now is t- now is definitely go time, guys. And so it's all about changing the consciousness of this planet right now. And I know, you know, Joe has had a lot of really interesting interviews over the years. I know you've been on uh, Rex's several times and we had talked, I forget if you were on Rex before us or after us, but it was right next to each other. Uh, Leak Project. Rex is a great guy. He's, He's fun. He covers a lot of great subjects. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, I think the in March, uh, right when this COVID thing was like coming about, and I remember uh, Rex interviewing me. It was actually a funny because he's he gets crazy at times, which makes it really really interesting. He's a great guy. I love him too, and uh, he feels like family, like like you guys do. And uh, so uh, I think I did an interview with him first, which kind of set the stage for, and it, it gave a for those that never followed me or didn't know who I was how uh, Terry and I used to do these channelings and how it all started and, and how it all came about and all the information that I, I garnered for all these years. A lot of it initially started out with this exploration through channeling. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's demonic and it's this and that. You know, there are some dangers in it. Like, you got to protect yourself, especially earlier on. When I was talking about vibrations earlier, you start out at a lower vibration and you work your way up, 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 up. And so when you get into the higher vibrations, it's, it's more uh, unconditional love, and there's no judgment, there's no fear, there's no doubt. But the lower ones, there sure are. There, there's, there's some tricksters that'll come in and they'll tell you things that aren't really true. So you just got to be careful when you're on this path. And it's just like anything else. It's when you're a, a child and you jump on a, a bicycle and, you know, you have to trip and fall a few times, whether you're running, whether you, you, you uh, wreck your bike and you don't have training wheels, and then you get better at it and you understand, you learn from your experiences. But it's really important to protect yourself if you're going to go in that um, direction. But I remember specifically um, uh, Rex's um, interview, and then it kind of led into your interview as well, with talking about the COVID and what's, what's going on with that and... and, and you know, anybody that's a, a, a medical doctor, a nurse practitioner, a PA, a nurse, like, you should be questioning this because none of this stuff makes sense. And when you look at the numbers and the CDC's coming out and they're, they're backpedaling now and they're saying, oh, there's only, you know, I don't know what the exact number is now, but there's significantly less than what they projected. So you have to start to question this. And then if it isn't what they say it is, then what is it and why are they doing it? And so... 
you know, if you wanted to know a little more about that, I guess you could go back and watch those two interviews. Um, but it's interesting today to go back and watch that video just to see what was said and see how it has transpired up until now. Yeah, I think people are waking up to that fact. I mean, as far as the economy goes, damage has been done to a point of almost um, where it's it's going to take forever to get back to where we were. And not that that was a great place, because honestly, the system needs to change in the first place. But what they're doing, again, you know, they've wiped out so many mom and pops stores and restaurants and people that threw everything in their life into their own, you know, small business. And eventually all we're going to have is just, you know, the big corporations. You know, it, it, as we said before, um, it, I'm not fearing communism. It's it's fascism is what it is because fascism is corporate control of everything. And basically that's, that's where we're going. And that just makes it easier for, again, the one-tenth of one percent to control the 99.9. But again, we're waking up to this. And, and there is help from above and above in other dimensions as well. So when you were doing those channelings, what group were you channeling? Was there a certain ET or interdimensional group that you channeled the most? Uh, initially, we started out at the ghostly realm. And uh, we just started exploring that realm. And we literally were going ghost busting like you see on TV today. And then we went from that realm to the archangel realm. And then we went from then there to the ET realm. And, yeah, we, uh, we channeled a time traveler a few times. I mean, there's been some major. The Syrians were really big at the very beginning and even up towards the end. And um, the, uh, the Anunnaki, I was into those beings at one time. And, you know, I was studying the, the Nibiru thing and Zachariah Sitchin. I actually called him and I was going to interview him on my uh, show, uh, Universal Talk. And... Uh, it was funny, I'll never forget. He called, he was on a like one of those old phones, it sounded like, and, and he left a message, and I called him back, and uh, he asked me if I was doing online uh, radio shows or um, like uh, an AM program. And at the time, I was doing both. I started this whole thing out on an AM program in Pennsylvania, which was really interesting. Scared the crap out of me. I thought I was, I thought I was had the flu the first day I did it, but here I was so angst- about doing this radio show, I walked into a, a literally it was a real radio station with all these switches and dials, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I just had this drive to get this information out to people. And uh, anyway, he says to me, he says, "Is it uh, online or is it uh, AM? You know, radio shows?" And I said, "Well, it's a little bit of both." And he says, "Well, I don't want to do it because I shun the internet." <laughs> and then he just hung up on me. And so I actually got to talk to that gentleman before he passed away. And uh, anyway, uh, we were uh, channeling the Anunnaki the one time. And I'll never forget it because I was really into Nibiru then. And, and when uh, Terry was channeling, she had to really reach out. Like it, it would, This is like one of those moments where you knew it was different. Because typically she could tune into these other uh, ETs these other entities within, you know, seconds or minutes. And this took a while. This took minutes and minutes. And I was like, what the heck is going on? It was like she had to really reach way out there to reach these guys. And when they came through, um, they were, they were, I don't want to say standoffish, but they were more like, uh, an era superiority kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, they like they were almost like how dare you contact us and like like who are you like you little peon type of a thing, and I was like, I said, well, knowing what I know about Nibiru and studying this stuff and it comes around every so often, all this like, what are you guys gonna do when 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 you come back around? And they said to me, they said it depends on what we find when we come back, and I was like, wow. That's pretty deep. And then it kind of pissed me off at the same time. I was like, well, who the hell do you think you are to come back here and, and manipulate the, the, the population of the planet? And, and I actually said that to them. And, um, and they, they said to me, they said, we look at you like you look at insects. And it completely floored me. And I thought, holy crap, because they're... Their technological advancement is must be like a thousand years advance or something like that, and they just look at us like we're these little insignificant 
you know, like there's some ETs that don't even know we exist, just like we walk on the earth and there's ants below us and we just don't even recognize it because we just don't focus our attention towards it. And that's kind of how they were looking at us. And it was an eye opener to me. I, I must say, I'm like, wow, this is pretty deep stuff. Like I never even have thought of these concepts before and here it is coming through. Yeah, so, you know, that goes along with pretty much the stories of uh, how they view us as nothing but a uh, slave race. And yet we see so many of these other beings, you know, like Arcturians and Pleiadians and Dromedans and Syrians. And, you know, these beings, they don't view us in that light. No, not at all. In fact, and this goes back to what we started out with, with the energies and the vibrations. They felt like... They were a higher dimension than where we were as far as the third dimension, the physicality that everything vibrates at. But they were at a higher, like maybe a, a mid-fourth uh, mid dimension, I would say, just the way it felt to my physical body. And I got really good with, before the person would even say who they were channeling, I would tell, like, oh my gosh, this is Archangel Michael. Oh, this is the Andromedans. This is the Syrians. I knew it before they even said a word because I could feel the vibration. And so... The, what I got out of it is there's 3D and then there's all these other dimensions, but fourth, to me, this is my truth. This isn't anybody else's. I'm just telling you my experiences here. And so fourth dimension was like a bridge from three to five. And the lower fourth dimensional are just above us where they're out of our, 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 our spectrum of light that we can physically see as humans. So they can do all kinds of things that we don't even know they're doing behind the scenes. And just because you can't see it don't mean it don't exist. I mean, we have bacteria, you know, there's ultraviolet, there's infrared. We can't see it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We've developed tools in order to see it and measure it, etc. And so the, the, there are, are, whether you call them draconiums, the reptoids, the, uh, um, um, the Anunnaki, th there's a lot of these guys that aren't really positive and not, they don't have our best interest, but there are positive ones that are like our star brothers and sisters, like the Syrians and the Andromedans, oh my gosh, and the Arcturians, they have this hugely high vibrational energy that is just like this love vibration that you just, it's, it's almost like you're in the presence of God type of a thing, like you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. And so there's, there's such a dichotomy as you're doing this inner work, and as you experience it, you, you start to put the pieces to the puzzle together going, oh, okay, I understand what's going on here. And so without a divine intervention on this planet, as bad as it's gotten and it's continuing to get, I don't know how humanity could actually escape a complete ca catastrophe on this planet. And I'll explain a little bit. It's If you were to take the president and change him out for another president, that person either gets killed, they get influenced, they get paid off, whatever. So you can't do it subtly over time through um, people dying off or attrition. It, it has to be some main event that happens in the snap of a finger that catapults us. It changes things because, again, the drip thing isn't going to work. There's too much influence here. There's too much negativity. And so I really believe that these higher beings are coming here. Some are just observers. That's it. They're just looking at the looking at us. And the other ones are, you know, are here to assist. And it's because they are us. And we there's I know there's a lot of people out there that are listening. They're like, well, I'm I'm a Syrian or I'm an Arcturian or I'm a Pleiadian. I'm from this. And so what you have to realize is, yes, you are, but you're also an aspect of all the other ones, too. Because if you've ever had a near-death experience and you pull that essence of yourself, that spirit, out of yourself, there is no learning. You don't need to learn anything. You know it all because you are all. Everything is interconnected, and you know it in that moment of time. Whereas when you're in this physical, limited, dense, 3D physical body, you feel as if, you have to learn lessons, and you're on this planet to do various things. And But what you, what you realize once you get out of the, your physical body is that all aspects are you. You've played that role as an, uh, an Arcturian or an Andromedan or whatever. Some people resonate more with one of those beings, and you've come here to do that. And you're here to help other people that resonate just like that for the purpose of an experience. And again, this is all my information that I've garnered over the years and if it doesn't resonate with you then just throw it away 
If you are in the realm of the religious realm and you're into the archangels, then that's fine. Again, there is no judgment. It, everybody just is. Everybody's in their perfection, and we're here for a per, a uh, experience. Yes, yes. Mm. Your takes in. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. You know, looking at things and feeling things from all different aspects is something that we we get to do, and we're very lucky to do that. And one of the things when Joe was talking about that that vibration you feel when you feel like super, super happy, um, I've, I've got to feel that a few times before, and it's, it is unexplainable, and it is beautiful, and it's one of those things that... Um, you know, you're just really lucky if you get to feel that and experience it like the whole universe. You can't, nothing can get you down. There's absolutely nothing on the planet that could upset you. Just like everything is totally okay. So that's a really interesting feeling. Yeah, and, and I've felt it too. And felt it often with with uh, Cindy in the middle of the night when she's asleep. And all of a sudden, you know, there's like a vibration that happens and then Joe's Joe's motioning like feeling it now I am I actually have chills but remember whenever we did the meditation yeah yeah that was great as soon as you said that I I, I went back to that moment and like I'm getting chills over my body because we kind of were on the picnic table and we're all holding hands and we're raising the vibration and remember that feeling Mm -hmm. It was like this amazing, like we were tuned into these higher beings, if you will, and, and, and or energies. And it was just like, oh my gosh, I don't want to leave this. And then you open your eyes. Remember, it was light when we, we did that. And we were all closing our eyes and we opened our eyes. When it was all said and done, it was pitch black and all these stars were in the sky. And it was just beautiful. Oh, yeah. And something something strange happened to my heart that night. It's like I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I have heart palpitations anyway, but I got this cramp in my heart. And it's like I... I know we removed some blocks that night for sure. It was beautiful. Yeah, and that's the type of thing that we're going to be doing, yeah, consciously coming together and just sending out that that peace and love and compassion vibration uh, because we're waking up. We're waking up. We understand that we are co-creators. We have tremendous power. And so we're going to shift our focus and we're start to, we're going to start to come together in smaller groups and start to create these like safe zones I would say uh, because yeah I think every every corner of the earth is going to experience changes of sorts for sure and some more than others so it's up to us individually to anchor our light in and to start raising the vibrations of the of the planet uh, to counteract what the darker energies are doing and, and trying to do and it is it's amazing and we could tap into this blissful energy it's just incredible. It's just incredible to feel that. And it does wipe away, you know, all those, well, darker energies that are around us. Uh, just like so many people that have crossed over to the other side get this feeling that's so blissful, they don't want to go back. They just don't want to go back. You know, I had shared with you um, a friend of mine that was dead on the table for 35 minutes, toe-tagged. They were going to roll her down uh, to the morgue. And then she came back because when she was on the other side, she just felt a loving embrace that she didn't know what to name it because she was Christian. She was thinking in terms of Jesus. She didn't even see it, Uh, but it just kind of enveloped her in pure love. And she just it was like, I don't want to go back. Hell no. And it told her, you got to go back because you're going to have twin boys and one of them is going to become an important leader in the future and so she was already uh, you know getting a little bit past where she was thinking about having any more kids uh but she did and it was kind of miraculous that she had twin boys just like she was told and one of them is already kind of going down into the political realm of sorts so it, it really gets you wondering but we have purpose we have purpose here we are so many of us are here for a reason and are perhaps just discovering that right now yeah, you know, um, my purpose, uh, it, it came to me later. Uh, obviously, you're, you're, you're driven to do certain things in your life. And as you're in complete bliss and, and harmony with what you're doing, it, it's not even work. It's something that you really are inspired in spirit. You're inspired to do this. And so myself, it, it, 
I almost got out of uh, practicing medicine. In fact, I shifted from family medicine because of vaccines and all the other craziness that's out there. And um, I almost quit. In fact, I did for a short period of time until I realized that somebody has to be the bridge. Somebody has to bridge this gap that goes from what we consider today as traditional medicine um, to, you know, complementary. And again, these are words just so everybody understands that, you know, whether it be energy healing, hypnotherapy, um, you know, the herbal supplementation, all these types of things, there's, there's so much more out there. And um, patients today are aware and uh, awake and aware to this. And a lot of times, and this is funny, I've said this before, but for those who haven't heard this, I would have patients that come in that had high cholesterol and they weren't eating right, they were overweight, and, and, and I would have the discussion with them like, hey, I can, you know, help you out with a diet plan and help you lose weight and exercise and, and uh, you can do the more natural route. And those, there's been times where the people are like, hey, listen, doc, I'm not going to do any of that. Just give me the pill. And I have to respect their opinion. It's their own free will. I can't sit there and judge them about it. So I'm there to help them if that's the way they want to handle it. But I'm also there to help and say, hey, by the way, you have a choice. You don't physically have to take this. In fact, I wouldn't recommend this, this, or this, but I would recommend this. And you get to decide. What I know of this, this is what we normally would do. And what I know about this, this is what you can do. And so those choices are very rare going into a what we, again, call traditional medicine. In fact, when I have these discussions with my day-to-day patients, they look at me, they're like, wow, like no one's ever talked to me like that before. No one's ever explained this to me before. And so we're not trained this way in, in uh, traditional schooling, as you can imagine. You, you, you have to... Uh, memorize something, regurgitate it, and it's something that's been around forever. And we have all these new technologies that are out there, and we call them new. I mean, they're basically on the shelf. I mean, if you want to look at just one, just one, look up uh, Stanley Myers from Colorado Springs, Colorado. He developed a, uh, a system where, um, and you can, if you get on YouTube, type in his name, he had a little buggy that he could run from Los Angeles to, to New York City, and he used... I forget how many gallons he figured it would take, but you could use regular water. Um, it could be salt water. I mean, and this it ran on water. And, and we've had several inventors that have come out with these types of things that are, are no longer here. And so we know these things exist. It's just like, let's raise the vibration. Let's act. Let's go in a positive way. And let's, let's get these things released so we can move forward with what we know is already our highest potential. Yeah, it, it's part of this bigger plan that's been there to keep us in the dark. And, you know, there's really no reason for fossil fuels anymore. It, it's it's just a, a means to control. And so, yeah, bridges are definitely needed. And if Karma Doc is still in the, <laughs> you know, she's another one that's yeah. trying to be a bridge. And she is a bridge, you know, and I've known a, a few others as well that are working really hard to change the system and to get people to step outside the system as well and to think for themselves. It's really important that we think for ourselves. We've been so conditioned by society. And you know, I've said it a million times, you know, Buddha himself said, don't believe anything because I tell you or your teachers or your parents or anybody. You have to basically think for yourself and feel also. So merge your head and your heart. And then when you feel something resonates then you move forward but you know we have to wake up the masses so that they will start thinking for themselves they they absolutely will and i just think it's a beautiful thing that we do have um doctors now that are starting to wake up and can actually offer us these options when i was in the medical system the i was given i was not given that choice i wasn't given any alternatives i had no clue there was alternatives i was just given the pill and it did it took me probably i don't know 13 or 14 years to figure out wow there's other modalities that i could use but by then there was so much had been done to me and now i have to go back and undo a lot of things and clear everything out and like regrow 
parts of my brain because they were actually deadened. And it's a horrible thing that they do to people who have anxiety or PTSD. They just deaden them with the pills. And a lot of times that doesn't even work. So it's just really, really wonderful and heartwarming to see that things are getting better. It is. And so I want to thank everybody uh, for joining us today and we will take this up again in the future if if we're able to I think we could I think we could do maybe this on a regular basis it would be nice um, and maybe we'll get uh, karma doc in on the discussion as well it, it's wonderful having you know practitioners with open minds and with the understanding that there's 